Pain to pleasure. That's the topic we're going to cover here today on Self Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook. Get rid of your problems, not your partner. Now, this particular topic came into being because it's a topic that's been brought to my attention a lot the last couple of days. Uh, one gentleman was even talking about the, the, the pain that he's had because the, the last couple of years he hasn't really had a relationship with his, uh, his wife and his child. And it's because of things that he's done in, in the relationship and he takes full responsibility for that. And, but it's a lot of pain that he's been going through. And as you know, uh, and what one of the things that he was doing, which unfortunately a lot of people do with pain, is he tried to block it out and um, tell himself stories like, uh, my child would be better off without me in, in his life, and it's better that they don't have to deal with me because I don't have my stuff together. Well, see, stories like that, as you can tell, just by the things that he said, allows you to be a victim. And we all know victim is not a place we want to hang out. Um, we want to turn that. We want to turn those particular obstacles into victories, and not live in the victim mode. I had another person we were talking, and this one is a topic that's a little. It's it's a little different, but the the the, the bottom line is the same in terms of. Uh, this is a person that hasn't been dating a lot recently, and and. They got into a relationship and we were talking and then they had made the comment in front of their partner about, well, you know, because I've been single for a long time and shoot, it ain't no biggie to me. And and it came off as, so if we broke up, I'm still cool. And I had a conversation with that person one-on-one -on -one later and said, that's never something you want to put out there in the air. Now, even if you believe that it is okay and I'm going to live with or without you. Because we've had that conversation too, you guys know. I tell you the difference between need and wanting. You want to be with a particular person. The world keeps telling you, no, you look for somebody you need. No, you're not. Um, because you have to be, if it's a need, it means you can't survive without it. Wanting the desire, you can have a strong desire for something, but you will still move on without it. Does that make sense? And so in this particular case, what I was helping him understand is you never want to put in the air that doubt in your partner's uh, ear or thought process that I don't mean anything to you because what I was sharing to him, if, if she threw that at you, how would that make you feel in terms of, or at least make you think, because we know we create our own feelings, but what would be the thought process? And that's where the feelings come from. It's the thought processes. But what would be the thought if someone threw that at you and basically said, well, shoot, I've been single for a while. So, <laughs> so you know, it ain't no biggie to me. And it's like, would you feel special? Would you feel significant? Would you feel needed in that relationship? And if you keep throwing those kind of vibes towards a person, it's only time before they're going to leave. And then you're going to act shocked and be like, I don't get it. Now you will be tested on your comment on whether it bothers you or not. And so the way I'm saying this relates is because what I was sharing with that person, as I said, because it's a stumbling block that I've had and I still at times wonder if it's still something I'm still dealing with, is when you get to that point where you're like, if people walk out of my, I don't care, or if this certain thing, I don't care. And I said, and the world kind of teaches us, you got to get strong and tough to that point. And I don't buy that. And the reason I had said that and what I was sharing with him is, is it the wall that you have up, which is why you don't care if you, why you made that comment about if they leave or whatever. Have you created a wall that you, re you refuse to let people get close enough to you where it would actually hurt you? In other words, become vulnerable in a situation. You guys may have heard me share this story before where I had someone who made the comment that they're not dog people. And so all this time, I'd always thought that maybe they just didn't like dolls for whatever reason, but I never had the conversation with them. And then one day we were having a conversation and this person was talking about the fact when they were a little kid that their uh, dog had passed away and that was their best friend and it crushed them. And as soon as they said that, I was like, oh my goodness, there lies the truth. 
It's not that he's not a dog person. It's because of the pain that he created from losing his dog. He never, ever wants to experience that pain again. And so he's put up a wall, which is staying away from dogs. That way he would never um, have to go through that again. But the only challenge with that is you guys have also heard me say, how you do some things is how you do all things. So he's not only doing this with dogs, and that's the part he's not recognizing. What's going to happen is you're going to put up walls in all relationships because they're all going to equal the same thing, which is pain. Which is, again, uh, I, one of the people I'm talking about earlier when he was talking about the thing with his kids. He was talking about the pain thing that the voice and because it's always trying to make you bad. You guys know I've talked about that. Too. The voice is not your problem. What happens is if you ask bad questions, you're going to get bad answers. So if you ask your mind, why are you so fat? What is the mind supposed to do except look for reasons for why people fat? And it'll go, because you eat all the cookies and because you're just a slob. And we go, see, there it goes. You asked a bad question. It's not trying to figure out good, bad, right, or wrong. See, that's what we do as human beings. What it's doing is looking for a particular vibration, a certain energy. We've used this, you know, uh, radio stations to make it simpler. If you were trying to get to station 104 and you do the 103, it's not going to work. The, the connection's not there. So the brain is saying you're looking for station 104. So it's going to find things that corresponds with station 104. So in this particular case, you ask the question, why am I fat? It's going to look for stuff on station 104 that says why people are fat. And it's going to give you back that information. The brain is not after you. The brain is not trying to attack you. That's a myth that people keep passing on. It's not real. You got to remember, it does just the opposite. It's doing everything possible to keep you safe. You have to get good at saying, if what you're telling me is keeping me safe where I'll never be able to get what I want because I'm so, you know, uh, I don't want to, I've used the analogy across the street because the fact I might get hit by a car, I might fall and skid my knee, so I'm going to stay over here because I know the pain of staying over here is I'm not going to get what I want, but the pain of crossing the street is so much real. So I got a pain versus a pain because remember we said we do things for one or two reasons, either to avoid pain or to gain pleasure. In that particular instance, I have two pains going on. And whatever pain is real is the one I'm going to follow. So, but anyway, what we were getting to in this particular thing is the gentleman's asking bad questions. It's not the brain trying to attack you. And the reason I keep emphasizing this is I don't want you guys running around thinking your brain is an enemy and it's out to get you. It's, it's, it's this villain. It's, it's trying to sabotage you. It's not. It's not. It's going to do everything to keep you safe, but at the same time, it's going to answer questions according to the questions that you give it. So if you give it bad questions, it's going to give you bad answers. So instead of saying, why am I fat? It, 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 you could have said, what can I do to become healthier? Then your brain starts station, because that's station 102. Now it's starting to look at station 102 to see what answers it can give you to answer that question. Does that make sense? So it's not that it's out to get you and it's this villain or whatever. But anyway, what I was getting to on the pain thing is, is there a wall? And that's what I was sharing with the gentleman that says he doesn't care. Have you done the same thing that the gentleman did with the dog? You put up a wall that keeps you from getting close to anyone, keeps you from ever being vulnerable. And that's why you, quote unquote, don't care because you're not opening yourself up. Well, why is that significant? Because you're not living and you'll never, ever fully enjoy life and never truly be in a relationship because you have that wall that you haven't even recognized that it's there. And the reason I said the same thing, you know, that is something that I've, I've had to even ask myself at times is because I do. We've talked about the four different personalities and the T personality, the theory personality. Um, they're usually from the, the uh, 
we want I want to say the humanistic perspective, but from more of the intimate, uh, the caring side of their brain, they don't really hang out in that that area a lot. And so a lot of times it comes down to they really don't care. But even those people have, you know, that that personality. I don't want to say those people because we all have all four personalities. It's just whether that is your strongest personality. And the people that that's their strongest personality, it's not that they don't care. It's they program themselves where they, they have a wall, but they do have a certain amount of people because those people usually have about two to three people with that personality. I'm saying those people, we want to get away from saying those people, but people with that, that personality is their strongest trait. Um, they're not attached to their emotions they try to stay away from it. And that's where I'm saying to me, it's kind of a wall because even them, even though they try to play that role, they have two or three people that they have very close relationships with. And if they threw a party and those two or three people didn't show up, they would be crushed. So we all care. We all want to feel significant. So it's a myth whenever we say that. So what I was trying to get to this gentleman is, is there a wall? Is there something that's up there that's keeping you, that you're fighting to make sure you don't care? And then what happens is you're not truly opening up to this relationship because you're keeping that wall. And if you do, and if that is what's going on, you'll never, ever truly have a relationship that works. And so that's why I said, because me, the theory is my second strongest personality. So at times I do get like that on certain issues or certain topics or you know, when, when people, you know, I've, I've said that if somebody want to be my friend, don't want to hang out. I mean, I don't care. And I always ask that question. Is it that you don't care and you've built that wall to detach people from you? Or is it because, again, and for me, I, I've come to the conclusion, at least hoping I'm accurate. <laughs> and that's that I've just gotten better at the stories that I write. And I realize people have the right to think and be. That's why, again, my motto is ain't right and ain't wrong. It's my opinion. It's people have the right to walk their own path through their own things. And because of that, if you choose to go a different route than what I want to go or something or think the way I want to think, I just uh, I just step back and go, but they have that right. But I have to be careful in those that that is a strong part of who you are. Is it that you really don't care? Or do you have that wall? And if you do, you got to pull that wall down or you can never really live. And so, but the idea behind this particular conversation is how do we move from the pain to the pleasure? Because again, remember, we do things for one or two reasons, either to avoid pain or to gain pleasure. And that comes from the four steps that I've told you guys that we go through. And uh, we'll do a brief recap on that. But I said you have thoughts. And really, you start with words, you know, because I, I example I use is uh, so it'd be five steps. But really, the words we don't really talk about a lot. But the words is like the first one, because whatever language that you speak, like I use the example, if I say Donetto, if you've never heard of Donetto, it has no impact on you whatsoever. But if I told you, oh, that's Spanish for the word money, then all of a sudden you got a whole bunch of different thoughts and a whole bunch of different emotions will start to show up. Why? Because you do know what money means and you have certain thoughts and beliefs on money. So it'll bring in a whole bunch. It'll go to the station that you've created on money. So, but the steps are we got the words and then those words will turn into thoughts. And, and I use the analogy of a computer to make it real simple. The word would be whatever you type into your browser. So if you typed in the word love, that's the word part, which was step one. Number two is going to bring up those thoughts that we have. And that's if you guys remember when you put a word in the browser, all these different topics are going to come up using, you know, which are different thoughts, which are different pages that you can click on the word thought. I mean, on the word in this case, love, because we said love. So there's different words. I mean, different uh, uh, topics that you can click. Those are what I call your thoughts. Depending on what which one you click, that's going to be which is step three, which is a story. That page has its own definition of what love is, and it's going to give you some examples of what you and I do the exact same thing. We take in all these thoughts from past experiences, things that people have taught us all, and then we're going to write a story. From that story, we will have an emotion, which is step four. 
that emotion is the anger, the frustration, whatever. You guys know what emotions are, but that's where the emotions are going to come from. And then those emotions will dictate the actions that we take, which is basically step five. So if you understand that concept, you have the words, then you have the thoughts, then you have the stories, then you have the emotions, then you have the um, actions. You just play it backwards depending on where you are. If you go, I don't like the way that I'm feeling. Feeling is step four. So how did I get to step four? Obviously, I did step three. Step three is what? Stories. And if you guys remember nothing else that I always share, it's always going to come down to stories. No matter what, you go forward or you go backwards. We're going to get to stories is the key. That's the, that's the, another way of saying it is decisions. The difference in people's lives are the decisions that we make. And we make those decisions based on the stories that we're writing. So if you're writing a story and you keep compounding stories that have to do with pain, that's why you're going to have pain. And then this particular gentleman that's sitting there with the, uh, the, his family and the fact he hasn't been in their life, as long as you could continue to write the victim stories, being a victim is never going to make you feel good about yourself, which equals pain. So the only way that that's going to change is what? We said to change our feelings, which is four, we had to go to three, which is story. He has to change those stories, which is what he actually came out and said eventually is that he told basically those thoughts. We've, I've danced with you for the last couple of years and I'm done. I've allowed you to lead and I've allowed you to put me into a depressed, a depressed state. I'm no longer hanging out there anymore. I'm taking control of my life. I'm making the decisions around here. Exactly. That's why I tell people, you control your emotions. Don't ever get to the point where you think your emotions just happen. Now, you've created habits on the way you normally respond to things, which now it seems like that's just you. But it's a habit that in certain situations, if you feel like you're losing control, your first thing is to it's anger is triggered in you. That's not a natural state of being. People go, well, it's natural. No, it's not. Because if it was natural, everyone would respond the exact same way. And they don't. But the way you've learned to deal with this situation is anger because you feel like it gives you back some power. What you got to do is understand I can get power without getting angry. I have to rewrite my stories to give me back the power. Does that make sense? Because the only reason I felt like I lost power is because I've wrote some self-defeating stories. So if I can write some stories that will empower me, then I can take back power without having to attack other people and getting angry and violent and all the other stuff that people do. I just have to learn how to change my stories. So that's actually how we're going to go from the pain to the pleasure. Now, it may not be a quick jump from pain to pleasure. Like I tell people, you might have to go from depressed to just being sad because you might have to write a story because the story you wrote now, this total depression, like I, I shared a while back about the gentleman who told me he had thought about committing suicide because he had lost his wife. And, um, and I shared with him that I had lost my wife and I told him the difference between you and I is the stories. You're writing the what if, the could have, the should, all the victim roles, all the what if stories. You're going to get depressed, but you're supposed to. Why? Because they're victim stories. They're depressing stories. So the response, the emotion happened according to the way it's supposed to. You're not supposed to be thinking negative thoughts about what you didn't do with her and be happy. You guys get me? So you have to change those stories. And that's where I told him I changed the stories when I lost my wife. I could go to the beach and look at the water and go, man, it, man, I wish, Terry, you were here. And then I think about it. I said, shoot. I looked up the first time I did. I was like, shoot, dear, you got a better seat than I do. You can see everything that's going on out there. You guys see, I didn't write a victim story. I wrote a story that made me feel good. I will never be happy she's not here, but I can be at peace with the fact that she's not here. So that's why I'm saying, so you may have to go from just being depressed to being sad. And then we can work on that sad story to move it. Does, does that make sense? For some of the time, it ain't about even getting the pleasure. 
is get to a neutral state to where, like in this case, I'm never going to be happy she's not here, but I can be at peace when she's not here. So that gets me to a neutral point to where I'm not sad and I'm not happy, but I've learned to be able to move forward and to be at peace with the fact, because you guys know the stories that I've shared, the stories that I, I, whenever I think about her, I write all the great things that her and I did, which makes me smile. You get me? So thinking of her, I can smile and be happy. The fact that she's not here is the part that I'm saying, I'm never going to say I'm happy she's not here, but I'm at peace with the fact that she's not here, but I'm happy about the moments and, and the things that we, we did together. So that's how we're actually going to move from the pain to pleasure, if that's where we need to get to. Or like I said, we may just need to get to neutral. And, and that's the state of where we need to be. And that's going to start by recognizing where you are. Again, remember those, those five steps. Um, the number one, like I, I threw it in there, but number one is not really significant because we know the words is the language in which you speak. You got to have those in order to have some thoughts. So, but the, the key is understanding is the thoughts. And then the, from those thoughts, you're going to create a story. Those stories are going to create an emotion. Those emotions are going to create some action. And if you don't like the actions that you're taking, let's go backwards. We go to, okay, then obviously I felt a certain way, which is why I took those actions. And where did those thoughts came from? The stories. And then the stories came from the thoughts. You get good at that. Then you understand as human beings, and we've talked about this before, the difference between animals as human being is the ability that we have to pause, to stop, to think things through. You can really get control of your life, your emotions and everything else, because when you get to those points and you guys know when I shared the story that I was down for two days because when this uh, COVID-19 stuff just came in and I started doing a lot of research and a lot of studying on what's going on and and I just got totally depressed and, and, and I did it for two days. And I mean, I had never experienced that in my life and I didn't know what it was. And and I was kind of like, now I have a different understanding when I hear people say they were depressed because I can see how you would get there. And I can also see how people would get to a point where they start thinking worse thoughts if I had stayed on that path. Because I can only imagine those two days was rough for me. I didn't want to get out of bed. So I can only imagine if I had kept those thoughts for a week, two weeks, a month, two months, six months, a year, and years, why people would eventually get to the point where they start thinking suicidal thoughts. I never even came close to that, and and, and I don't ever plan on that ever even being a thought process. I'm not one of those people going to say never, 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 because we all will say based on where we are today what we would never do, but you never know what you will do till you're put in a situation. But with my current state of mind, <laughs> being of sound mind, I would never do that. So I didn't get to that, but what I'm saying, the depression, the, the depressing thoughts, the not wanting to get out of bed, I can see how if that is something that, that went on for ages, you wouldn't want to leave the house, you wouldn't care about anything else, and you would start saying, what is life all about? What is the purpose? Is this it? Then, then why am I here? There's no reason. And you start having, whoo, dangerous place to hang out. So as we know, the way that you do that, again, the stories, and the way you might have to do those stories is you got to interrupt your pattern, which means you may have to, when you start going down those thought processes, jump straight up, go for a walk. Um, you guys have heard people say go exercise or whatever. That's one way, and that's usually the fastest way if you can jump up and go, woo, be, and get your body in a different uh, 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 position that changes your breathing and everything else. Then those thoughts and then what you focus on. Those are three ways to change it. Jump up the physical, change the, the, the stories, or which is the same thing, it's the focus. You gotta change what you're focused on. And you gotta do it quickly if you know you're headed in the wrong direction so that you don't lead yourself and stay in a state of pain. And this is not a denial because folks, you gotta be able at the same time, and I'll say that before I close because I was about to close out, but I'm not saying deny your thoughts. I'm not saying uh, play the game. And, and, and even the voice, when it's telling you something negative, most of us, we fight it and we go, okay, I'm not listening to that. And I'm not going, no, 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 no. Let it, let it talk. Let it do its thing because what you resist persists. And I learned this at a seminar I was at. I got called on stage and they asked me, they said, Ron, Tell the people you're not a cat burglar. I said, I ain't a cat burglar. 
They said, no, nah, say it like you mean it. I said, I ain't a cat burglar. He said, no, nah, I don't think they heard you. He's like, say it again. I said, I'm not a cat burglar. And he asked the crowd, he said, so what do you think? And they in unison said, he's a cat burglar. And I was like, wait a minute. I've been up here this whole time telling y'all I'm not a cat burglar. How y'all going? And, which is crazy because it's like, what's a cat burglar? I don't know. But I'm sitting here. How y'all going to make me a cat? I told y'all I'm not. Because... What you resist persists. We've heard that even in quicksand. If you fight it, you go down faster. Folks, don't resist it. Those negative thoughts come in. For me, I'm like, finish the story. If it says, you're fat, you go, thank you for sharing. And that's the reason that I'm in the process of eating uh, good foods. And See, I'm not interrupting. Okay, that thought came in. Because where did that thoughts come from? Obviously, bad questions that were asked before. And we got all, again, a whole bunch of thoughts in their brain. They come up. We don't have to worry about where they came from, why they ain't there, and all that. Just recognize, because they said there's about 70 thoughts a day that we have. 90% of those are repeated all throughout the day. And most of them are negative. We just have to get good at rewriting the ending of the story. The story can come in any way it wants. But let's get creative and rewrite the ending. So as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you that we that we talk on uh, Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you on Thursday. For those of you we into more of this self-love, love that person in me, and love me some me, <laughs> then I'll see you on uh, Monday. And folks, just remember, um, if you're in pain, that's a part of the journey. It's not something you have to beat yourself up and go through changes over. Just accept it that this is a part of the journey. What you do is just take control of the stories that have been re that take control of the stories that created the pain, and let's rewrite them in a in a way that moves us closer to pleasure and away from the pain. All right. Oh, and if you guys want, um, run over to. I almost forgot. What is it? Uh, RonSimplifiedMyers.online. Again, RonSimplifiedMyers.online. It has everything that I'm into right now. I just released, matter of fact, three different uh, video series. Um, and I have a, a special uh, discount. The best way to get that is uh, Ron's... Ooh, mine went blank there for a second. But it's uh, relationshipfreebook.com. <laughs> See, my, I will say it, Ron, and it's relationshipfreebook.com. That's the, the best discount you're going to get on all three because I put a package together where all three of them can be bought at one time. And, and basically, it's almost like buying one and getting all three. So anyway, I look forward to talking to you guys. And remember, enjoy the journey. If you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.